Hi, I'm Tom Slack. I'm a professional artist. Welcome to my Canvas excursion. Today I'm going to talk to you about portrait commissions. Are you done yet? I've been sitting for hours. Oh, you want to see it? Can I see it? Yeah. <gasps> it looks just like me. A lot of artists would like to know how they can break in portrait commissions. I'd like to share with you the experiences I've had with portrait commissions and maybe it will give you some ideas for your own use. Today I'm going to talk to you about three things. First, I'm going to talk about how I end up getting commissions. Second, I want to talk to you about the techniques I use in painting my and after that, I want to tell you some funny stories about the experiences that I've had as I did them. What do I do to get commissions? I have a Facebook site. I have a blog. And I also have Instagram. And I have people who have looked at those sites and have contacted me. Another thing that's really important and has been successful for me is word of mouth. People know about me or have talked to friends. Another way is through lectures I've given or workshops I've taught. People that I went to high school with or just associates generally in life, they'll find out that I do these things and they'll contact me. So there are some ways that it has happened. Usually when you do a portrait commission, you have the client sit for you or you work from a photograph. The whole process of them sitting for their portrait works well because you get to know them and their personalities and it comes out in the portrait. For example, here's Michelle. <laughs> well, are you ready? I am so excited. <laughs> okay. Tom, it's amazing! You like that okay? Yes! Oh my god, Tom, that is so wonderful! It looks amazing. I look amazing. The chair looks amazing. It is wonderful. It looks it so looks amazing. Good. Here's another one. So is it okay? It, I love it. It's me. Yes. You've got So me. thank you for letting me do it. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> and when I painted Melinda, this was her reaction. Better. Come around. That's why I'm going to cry. Oh, my goodness. I love it. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's me. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Awesome. I really love doing the paintings when the people sit and pose. However, a lot of times people don't have the time or the patience. In that case, I will work from a photograph. I really prefer setting it up, taking the picture so that I can get the lighting and everything correct. That always can't be the case. Sometimes I've done paintings of musicians. I have worked with video to come up with the portrait I'm going to paint. Here are a couple of examples of how that was done. Another portrait I want to talk to you about involved photography and painting while the person was there in front of me. This was for a man named Nathan. I wanted it to be a formal portrait. I had him wear a tux and we went to the Indiana State Capitol. I had him pose several places in the building.
Then after I got the pictures, I took a look to decide which one I wanted to use for the portrait. I started laying it in on my canvas. I would have him pose for me as I was working on his face and other things. And that's how I came up with his portrait and I think it turned out really nice. I've talked about having the subject pose and sit there while I paint them. I've talked about doing partially a photograph and the video, but I do an awful lot of paintings just from photographs. I really prefer to take the photograph if they insist on it because I like to make sure that they're posed correctly, that they have the right lighting, and that I can see what I'm working with. A lot of times people will send me a photo and say, would you paint this? And I look at it, there's no light or shadow, it's kind of hard to see what I'm looking at. Maybe it's fuzzy, maybe it's in color and when I try to blow it up it's pixelated so I can't see what I'm doing. So it's kind of a trick. There's a reason that a lot of people like me to do paintings from photographs. For one thing, they want to have a picture of their ancestor or their grandparents or somebody painted, someone who's passed away. Sometimes they want a painting of their grandchildren when they were little but they're grown up now or maybe wedding memories or things like that. I do portraits for people all over the country and even internationally and when I'm dealing with paintings from photographs so I can't really tell for sure what the person is like, I like to show the client a progression of the painting so that they can look and see what it looks like and not open up the box after I've mailed it and see that it's wrong. So that's what I usually do. If someone gives me a black and white photo from the past, it's tricky because I don't know what the colors are going to be. Here's an example of a black and white photo. My father from when he was in the service during World War II. I didn't know what the color was his uniform, I didn't know about his insignia or anything like that, so I had to research. I had to look up in all kinds of material to see what those patches on his uniform actually were supposed to look like and what color the uniform was. I remembered his complexion and this is how the painting turned out. I liked it a lot. Sometimes if I get a color photograph Everything is right. The highlights are great. I can see them clearly. Here's a photo, for example, of my mother. And I decided I would go ahead and do a painting of her. And here you go. Now I'll show you another painting I've done of someone from a photograph. I'm not going to show you the photo, but this is a person who was a waitress at a restaurant in San Diego. And this is how it turned out. I do have lots of interesting things happen to me when I'm doing these things. I was doing a portrait of an elderly gentleman, handsome guy, beautiful white hair, sparkle in his eye. He sat for me and I went back three times as I worked on it. When the portrait was done, and I thought it was great, he thought it was great, then his wife walked in and said, no, that's wrong. I said, well, what's wrong? Well, you've got too much kind of down here. Can you cut that back? And can you do this over here? And kind of do something around the eyes. And then she said, that's perfect. A little bit later, that man's daughter came in and said, Great! You did a painting of Dad when he was 30! I've given you some ideas of some of the things I've done as I've been involved with, with portrait commissions. I'd like to suggest one more thing. You might want to check into the Portrait Society of America. They're a great organization. 
I've gone to a couple of their conventions, one in Philadelphia and one in Washington, D.C., and they have famous portrait artists there to talk to you about their work and teach you how to do it, and they also give examples of how to get your portrait business going. Next time, I'm going to talk to you about juried shows, about you entering your paintings in these contests and how it works, about how it's successful and how it's not. I'd just like you to see how it really happens. What I'd like for you to do now is look over here. There's a little button that says subscribe. Go ahead and press that button. And furthermore, I want you to remember, go for your dreams!